All right, tonight we have a simple repair. We've got a hard drive that we need to swap a chip on. This is our tar or this is our new drive. It's a Western Digital one terabyte one terabyte hard drive, spinning hard drive. Um, this is the new drive, so we're gonna put a green dot on the drive, just a little tiny green dot, nothing super conspicuous. Just put a little green dot there so we know. And we also put a green dot on the board so we know this is the new board. You can see the green dot on the little uh, QR code and on the edge of the logic board there, there's a green splotch that I put. So that's our new board, that's the target board, or target drive. This is our donor. This is our other drive that needs the chips pulled off. Nice little clamshell. So we're going to gently set that down and it looks like that's a T, is that a T8 screwdriver? Indeed it is. We're going to take our T8 screwdriver and remove this board off of this dead drive. Oh, before we do that, we're going to color this QR code red. Just so we know which one is which. And this is red jaw. So we know they belong together. Okay. Got our hot hot air station hooked up. This is a quick 861DW. We're gonna have it at about 325, 350. I found that's uh, a good temperature and air at about 90. That's a good temperature that gets the chips off of the board within five five to seven seconds so you're not completely overheating it. Now, I've done this a couple times, um, so this may not be the perfect perfect amount of heat, but I found it works for getting the chip off quickly. And the chip we're looking at is, I'm going to show you an overhead view, and then we'll show you an under the microscope view. So the chip we're looking to take off, it looks similar to a BIOS from an, a computer. It's that chip right there. You're going to focus. Focus. See, that's why I have a microscope. There, oh, come on. You almost did it. Anyway. We'll go ahead and do microscope view or the microscope cam because then you can see see what I'm talking about. It's a lot easier than trying to do it on the overhead. I move my overhead camera because I can't see the screen in front of me. Having the camera hanging down, so I gotta figure out another um I gotta figure out another way to bring my overhead down so that's an eight legged ship there next to our wind bond I think that's the a NAND like a NAND memory um where's my phone uh phone 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 there's my phone we're just going to check some pictures real quick. Phone. Nope, 
that's the message I wanted. Got some pictures to look at here. Yep. Easy peasy pumpkin squeezy. All right. So yeah, that is the chip we are after. Can't tell what it is from the picture. Um, but I've got. Make sure my microscope camera didn't freeze because it loves to do that. An OBS. Um. See if we can rub some alcohol on it and read it. I'm just curious. Okay, that made it a hundred times worse. There we go. We'll turn it at an angle. Let's see if I can get it focused. There we go. There's the name. The name of the I see it's a, a P lowercase m 25W D O 20. That's the chip we're after. So we're going to transfer that chip from this old dead hard drive to a new one. In short order. <laughs> Sorry, I'm texting something. Now that that's super blurry. Yeah, my method is just to get in quick with some hot air and get out. All right, where'd you go, little chippy? There you are. All right, so in order to save this a ton of um, thermal damage, we're going to use 350 and... 90 air 95 air we'll get in there and get out i'm going to point my hot air in that direction to blow all the heat off the board it's just going to hit this chip blow all the heat this way onto my soldering mat i don't want to be blowing the air into the board you know, up against this NAN and NAN chip and stuff like that. I mean, we're going to be in there so fast that it's going to do minimal, minimal damage. So here we go. We're just going to apply some heat and warm this up from, from a good distance. Normally I have a soldering, solder fume extractor turned on. But for the sake of this video, I'm not going to have it on because I'm not going to be doing a lot of soldering. This is just a real quick job. It doesn't produce a lot of smoke. Normally, I have a solder fume extractor hooked up or turned on. So but we're just going to heat from far away. About six inches. You know, we're just going to generally warm up the board a little bit. And then we'll move in slowly for the kill and removal. Okay, so the board's nice and warm, so we're just going to go in and apply some heat to this chip. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, this one's taking a little longer to get off here. Seven, come on. I'm going to have to use a little more heat. Um, the last chip didn't take very long. Come on. I mean, these are these are basically BIOS chips, and I solder those all the time. Come on. 
off the board there any day now. I bet you uh, Western Digital uses lead-free solder. We're gonna up the temperature a little bit. This is too long, taking too long. Western, these are, this is a Western Digital drive, so they probably use lead-free solder. The other one I soldered on was older Seagate. And it took about five to seven seconds to get the chip off and to put it back on. Holy moly. Come on. You do not want to come off, do you? You want to stay on this board, don't you? There we go. Wow. Alright. So it's off. We removed it. Okay. We'll put our dead... Put our dead, uh board next to our dead hard drive let that cool down and we're gonna flip the new drive over and we'll transfer this chip onto there Now the customer is going to test this. He's going to turn the hard drive on and everything. So I unfortunately will not be plugging this in. So we'll just remove the new, remove the new board. We'll set the gently set the new drive over to the side. And we'll gently warm up this board and remove the chip and make a huge mess by knocking a bunch of stuff over because I can't get my fat hands and space where all my flashlights are hiding three flashlights four flashlights here and the super glue okay stay there dork all right, back to this. We're gonna warm this one up now in the same manner that we did before. This is a wind bond chip, so it's a different chip, but I think it should be should be the same. We're gonna go ahead and warm this chip up from a distance a little bit here. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and move in. And the board is trying to float away. We're gonna move over a little bit because my solder mat's bubbling up. It doesn't like the heat. It can take it, but it doesn't. Now that's how it should do. See how quick that was? That was less than, that was less than five seconds. I couldn't even get out three words before that chip popped off. That's how it's supposed to go. All right, and now we'll swap chips here. We're gonna put a little bit of flux. We're gonna apply a little flux on this one to help solder this one down nicely. Just a tiny bit. And we'll apply some heat and get that solder melting. Now if you drop your chip like I did and you are confused about the orientation and you don't have pictures, we're just going to do worst, worst case scenario here. Um, worst case scenario, if you don't have pictures and you don't remember which way the chip was orientated on the board, there's a white dot right here. 
and that tells you that that this pad right here next to that dot is pin one and all you have to do is take your corresponding your chip and place it in the corresponding fashion and you can see that this chip has a has a dot in this corner here that is pin one so you just match pin one and pin one and you're good to go so we're gonna go ahead and solder this on here this how long is this 15 minutes this literally could have been a five minute video but we'll go ahead apply a little heat onto here when you do it at an angle like this it also helps the flux to flow off the board instead of under any other chips so we'll go ahead and apply some heat to this Come on. And that's it. Our old chip from our old board is now soldered to our new board. So we're going to go ahead and let that cool for a minute. Now there's really no need to add any more solder or anything because these pins are soldered and they've got little fillets here at the ends. All of them have fillets so they're all solidly soldered. There's no point in making a giant mess wasting flux and solder and time. As you can see these are all nicely sol solidly soldered so we'll just let that cool for a couple of minutes and then we'll apply some some isopropyl alcohol and just kind of clean it up a little bit and then we'll be done. And so that is it. And who is Facebook messaging me again? Sorry, I'm I'm still here. I'm just looking at something. All right, our chip's probably cool enough. We're not gonna thermal shock it. Yeah, let's we'll take a little IPA, clean the area. And she looks factory. Nice and shiny. So we'll just let that cool off completely before we attach it back to the board. It's pretty cool now, but we'll just let it cool off some more. And that's it. That's my that's my video on how to swap. I don't even know what inf I I'm just doing this for somebody I don't know I know these are very similar looking to a BIOS chip like an SPI ROM from a MacBook or a PC or whatever so it probably contains some kind of controller data or something anyway that's it and there's just 
four screws that you put on the back of the drive. See, this is our green dot, our drive with the green dot on it. Got the green dot here. Got our green dot on our PCB. So we'll just set those on top of each other once this is cool. Which, yep, it's cool now. So we'll just set it back on top of here. Put the screws back in and that's it. I'm sure these are torqued down to a certain spec. I'm just going to kind of hand tighten them down and then the customer can decide if they want to use a proper torque screwdriver to torque them down to a certain spec or if they just want to reef on them. That will be up to them. Where did that screw go? He has gone into the ether. That's okay because we have a whole pile of them here, so guess what? Here you go. Same screw. Anyway, that's it. Put our new PCB on our back on our new drive with the new chip the chips under underneath and that's it so we're gonna put this back in its anti-static bag or its clamshell gently put that in there and that's it so hope you found this useful anyway give it a thumbs up if you liked it or let me know if I could have done something else or whatever. Otherwise, I will catch you in the next video. Take care and we'll see you later.